Hi all, I am Yunus. Welcome to my channel. Recently I cleared the AWS Data Analytics Specialty Certification. So I thought in this video, I will share with you my experiences of giving that exam with an objective to give you some useful tips so that it will be useful for the test takers among you. I will talk about how I prepared for the exam. I will talk about the key topic areas from where I got the questions. I think that will be quite useful for those who are preparing for the exam because you will come to know which are the areas which are important. As you know, data analytics is a specialty exam. It has 65 questions and you will get three hours for completing the exam. It is not as difficult as SA professional exam, but it may be slightly more difficult compared to the associate level exams. So my suggestion would be to go for any of the associate level exams such as Solution Architect Associate or Developer Associate before you try Data Analytics Specialty exam. Actually, AWS is going to replace Data Analytics Specialty exam from mid of next year. They are going to introduce a new associate level certification for data analytics. But the topics, the questions, etc. will remain more or less similar. So the tips which I am going to give in this video will be useful for the replacement certification as well. So how did I start my preparation? I bought a Udemy course from Stephen Marek and I went through the slides. I did not go through all the video courses. but. I downloaded the slides and I went through the slides. That was the first level of preparation. After that, I started taking practice tests as usual for all my AWS certifications I have done that. I actually bought two practice tests, one from Stephen Marek and one from Tutorials Dojo. And after every practice test, I analyzed the answers, especially the wrong answers. I updated my notes and went through the notes before the next practice test. And that is how I went through this whole process. And finally, after I completed all these practice tests which I bought from Udemy, I took the official practice test from AWS and it, it has 20 questions. I was able to score 70%. After that, I went for my final exam and I was able to score 80%. My view is that if you are able to take two full length tests and if you are analyzing the answers and learning from them, plus you are taking the official practice test and you are able to score somewhere around 60 to 65 percentage then you are actually ready for the final exam you can go ahead and take the certification exam you should pass okay now let me show you the preparation plan i followed maybe some of those points you can also adopt in your preparations now let's go into more details about my preparations and i would present it as my suggestions based on my own experience so let's begin so you should go through any course material for this particular certification and you should do that within a week. You should not take more than a week. When you go through this material, create your notes. And once that is done, go through the official sample questions provided by AWS to see where do you stand with respect to your understanding of the key topics. And you analyze the wrong answers and update your notes. And once that is done, you can actually buy a set of practice tests from Udemy or any other practice test providers and then you go through those tests one by one analyze the wrong answers update your notes and ensure that you go through those notes before you take the next practice test once you complete the practice tests which are available to you go and take the official practice test and see if you are ready for the final test basically if you are able to get some 60 to 65 percentage marks in official practice test you are actually ready for your final certification exam so in, in step one, when you are familiarizing with the topics, which are the courses which you can use? You can use the official exam readiness training, which is freely available. If you want, you can use that. It's a video based course and there are some practice questions as well included in that. Or you can actually use any of the Udemy course or courses available in the market. What I used was a course by Stephen Marek. I'll give you the link in the description. But there are several courses by Neil Davis, Stephen Marek and many others. You can pick and choose i think almost all all of these courses are good you can look at the user ratings then when you go through these courses you skim through the videos or what you can do is if slides are available to be downloaded you can download the slides and go through that that's what i did actually and the most important thing is take notes once that first round of reading is done you have to start with the practice test. I started with the official sample questions. You may try some additional free tests which are available online. 
such as Vizlab's free test of 20 questions or Tutorials Dojo free test of 10 questions. You can try these and then you can actually buy some of these practice tests. Actually, I had bought two, two of them, Tutorials Dojo as well as Stephen Marek's practice test. Tutorials Dojo has one full length test plus two mini tests and here Stephen Marek has one full length plus one mini or any other practice test. I use these two, so I'm just talking about it, but there are other practice tests as well. And after that, you can actually go for your official practice test. So I wanted to give you my scores, whatever I scored in my practice test. And why I do that is many a times when you prepare for these exams, when you go through the practice test, you will actually get very low scores. So you may get demotivated. To avoid that, I'm giving my scores because you can see how low I scored in my practice test. In sample questions, I got only 4 out of 10 correct, 40 percentage. Then I took tutorials, dojos, practice test 1 with 10 questions, again 40 percentage. But then in the next test, Stephen Marek practice test 1 with 10 questions, I got 7 correct. And even I was surprised there. But unfortunately, I could not maintain that standard in the subsequent test. Tutorials, dojo, bonus test of 25 questions, 56 percentage. Then Tutorials Dojo's full length test I scored 61%. There is some improvement. When I took Stephen Marek practice test 2, the full length test, I got 66%. And in the official practice test, I scored 70%, which was good. So from 40% to 70%, that was a big improvement because both are official practice questions. Then in the final exam, I scored 80%. So you can see that this 80% is the maximum if you compare it with any of the practice test scores. That is the exact reason why I'm giving these practice test scores so that it will motivate other test takers. Now, a few suggestions, tips and suggestions. Give yourself three to four weeks to prepare for this exam. Actually, I took three weeks only, but then I have taken other AWS tests and I have some experience. So I was able to give the final exam within three weeks time. Try to give yourself two hours per day on weekdays and on weekend days, four to five hours per Saturday or Sunday. If English is not your primary language, you can claim 30 minutes extra accommodation. And you may skip long or seemingly difficult questions in first pass. What I did was all the multi-answer questions and all the long questions I skipped. I had some 15 multi-answer questions, but there were only less than five long questions. When I say long question, you have to scroll down to see all the answer choices. So skip some of these questions. You can decide on your criteria for skipping the questions. Basically, wherever you think you will spend more than three minutes, it is better to skip it and come back to it in the second round. If you don't do that, it is possible that you may take long time in some of the earlier questions. And by the time you reach the 50th question, maybe your time is already running out. To avoid that, it is better to keep these questions for the second round. And there, when you come for the second round, you know that you have, say, 45 minutes left and you have only 10 questions. So you know how to manage the time. Well, the pressure is not that much. So now let us look at the key question areas. I'm going to only list the topics. I'm not going to explain it. Okay. That is because one, it will take a long time. It will become a full length course, right? So I'm not going to explain it. Second, all these topics are available in the AWS documentation. You just need to search through that. So under data collection, IoT sensor data ingestion, there were one or two questions. But I found Kinesis was the most important topic here. More than 10 questions were there related to Kinesis. So please ensure that you are thorough with Kinesis. It included some questions about Kinesis duplicate messages, then Kinesis Firehose buffer size, then Apache Kafka, Kafka connectors related there were questions. Kinesis data analytics, two or three questions were there. Random cut forest algorithm, there was at least one question. S3 storage class related, there were one or two questions. Then encryption, SSE S3 and SSE KMS, there was at least one question. Then please ensure that you know the minimum charge days for the various S3 storage classes. What I'm saying is, if you are storing your data in Glacier Flexible Retrieval, there is a condition that you will be charged for 90 day, minimum 90 days or 180 days. You should know what is that exact period. Not only for Glacier Flexible Retrieval, but other storage classes as well. Because there were questions where you need to know that. Then S3 Select was actually used as part of options, answer options. So you need to know what is S3 Select. Storage and data management related, data lake related, there were questions. Athena versus Redshift, you had to choose between these two. So you need to know the comparison. RDS related, at least one question was there. 
lake formation tagging one question dynamo db read capacity related there was a question regarding some typical errors in high meta store error there was a question windows fsx there was a question then hadoop distributed file system there was at least one question and please note that redshift is a big topic when it comes to the exam and there were several questions from redshift there was a question related to ra3 then there was a question related to slices basically the number of files should be a multiple of the number of slices in your cluster so there was a question related to that there was a question related to workload management a redshift copy then how to encrypt existing data in redshift there was a question column level access control that was another question redshift materialized view there was another question again regarding distribution key there were two or three questions and regarding absurd there was one question processing data pipeline related question was there lambda there was no direct question but it was used in the answer options in multiple questions app flow there was a question pi spark couple of questions were there data sets and data frames there were questions elastic resize concurrency scaling there was one question and anomaly detection there was at least one question with respect to athena and glue glue there were at least 10 questions so it did not be direct questions but glue appeared in the answer choices in some other questions so you need to know glue well so that you can answer all those questions msck repair table there was a question athena how to improve the query performance of athena there was a question athena work group couple of questions federated query one question cetas query job bookmark ddbc driver all these topics were touched upon in questions in analysis and visualization open search three to four questions were there quick sight four questions were there machine learning by quick sight there was a question raw level security open search dashboard related question was there quick sight enterprise edition you be thorough with the properties of quick sight enterprise edition then jvm memory pressure related to open search cluster there was question parquet format related two or three questions and visualization chart types such as word cloud circle packing etc there was one question when it comes to security cloud hsm there was some question about that vpc endpoint was covered in questions lake formation security there were a couple of questions so these are the key topic areas from where i got questions so consider all these as important so you may also get these questions so please ensure that you know all these topics very well okay i wish you all the best for the exam once you complete the exam please come back here and add in comments how this video helped you in clearing the exam or in case if you want to give tips for other test takers who may be watching this video you can actually include that also in the comment box i'll keep coming back with more useful videos please consider subscribing to my channel thank you bye